Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I've had a, a bit of a chance today to have a play around with um, a simple ATC circuit. Um, now, in terms of this particular radio build here, uh, for all intents and purposes, that's, that's complete. I'm not actually going to add any more to that particular series, uh, because the whole idea was just to get a, a, a simple SSB rig made just using those sort of commonly available parts. But what I am going to do, just to potter around with, is add some additional functionality to this um, as I think about potentially boxing it up. Um, now, one of the things that I um, had been suggested, and, and, and totally correct, uh, was the addition of AGC. So um, what I've done here, I'll go through the schematic in a sec. So what we're looking at here is the second IF. Let me see what's coming up there. Yep. So we've got the uh, the crystal filter here. Um, and what I've what I've done here, and, and you'll see in the schematic, is I've lifted the um, the capacitor that is bypassing the emitter resistor of that particular amplifier, and I've got going from that leg to earth a a small 4148 diode, um, which is being fed a DC voltage through this 1k ohm resistor, and the whole idea is um, as more voltage gets applied, the depletion zone decreases. Um, and uh, that capacitor that was there um, gets sort of more attached to earth. It's a, it's a very poor way of saying it, but suffice to say, uh, a better way of saying it is the emitter resistor becomes more bypassed and therefore the gain of that stage increases. So if, if I can make that voltage then variable, then I can, you know, on the fly vary the gain of that stage, uh, hence what I'm doing for the AGC. Uh, I am taking a, um, a tap off the output uh, and feeding that and amplifying that and we'll have a look in a sec. Uh, over here there's, there's two parts of the circuit, or three parts actually. Uh, the first part is just a simple um, RF amplifier, just amplifying up that IF signal. Uh, a detector there just to detect the, uh, the sideband energy. That's then being amplified, so it's now DC, so it's a DC amplifier. Then that's being fed into, at the moment, just breadboarded so I can play around. Uh, and a, uh, a 741 op amp, which is doing the uh, the negative slope uh, to drive back over here, applying that variable voltage to the diode. Um, so what I think I might do now is just have a quick look at the schematic, and then a quick look at what I've been playing around with in terms of how it performed. Noting this is a simple AGC and doesn't have any great sort of uh, fancy features, be it delayed, um, or ideal or the like. So I, I just mentioned before there's, there's three stages to it. So um, the, the IF amplifier up here, I mentioned about lifting that bypass capacitor. There it is there, that 100 nanofarads. Putting to earth a 4148 and then that series 1k ohm resistor uh, having the voltage applied to it. Uh, worst case now, so the, the 4148 has a, an ID max of 300 milliamps. So just want to make sure that if this was right up to VCC, where we are 13.8 volts, I'm not going to exceed that current. So 13.8 volts divided by 300 milliamps would give me 46 ohms. Um, I'm just going to go crazy and just make that 1K, hence why that's now a, a 1K ohm resistor. So that's, that's the logic there. Right, now I said that you, the circuit over here was made up of three stages. The first one is a, uh, an RF amplifier, which is amplifying that pick-off from the IF. Um, nothing special there. The, the core part of it is exactly the same as we've seen in previous uh, builds. In fact, it's exactly the same amplifier as, as the IF amplifiers. Um, the only difference being, apart from the RE, R1 and R2, is just using an RFC on the collector and dumping all of its output into the detector and in the input just to try and reduce the loading on uh, the output of that IF just using a 10 nanofarad capacitor um, it might even experiment with say a 1 nanofarad but at the moment it's a 10 nanofarad um, so I'm not going to go into the calculations for those because it's exactly the same calcs as I used for the um, for the IF amplifiers so the second part of that, so the output of that gets goes into the detector so if, no, again, just using a 4148, in fact the load across that is a, a 10k, then the 4148 recovering, or now envelope detector so to speak, around that sideband, uh, noting we don't have a carrier because it's been suppressed. And then we have here the 1 microfarad and the 1 uh, mega ohm variable resistor, 
uh, which is then setting the, the CR time constant for uh, what's being fed into the DC amplifier. So in terms of the how aggressive the AGC is uh, and how much it recovers after a, a noise spike is, is, is a function of the CR time constant. Uh, and if I get a chance I'll, I'll sort of demonstrate that um, if, if, if I remember. Into a uh, an MPF 102, could have used a J310 or something like that. I elected to use the 102 um, because it's just readily available and nice and easy. Uh, in terms of the source resistance there, uh, I just basically looked at the ID max for the 102 is 22 milliamps. Um, I'm going to uh, knock that down to 0.75 of that max and then 13.8 volts, even though this is 12, as we know this radio is running on 13.8. 13.8 um, divided by 0.75 times that maximum comes out 836. So I'm going to use a 1km resistor for that source resistance there. And the output of that as this varies with our DC coming in, is then being fed into the op amp. Now for this op amp I need it to be an inverting op amp because as our input signal increases I want to apply less and less voltage to that 4148 because um, I don't want to um, I, I, I don't want to bypass the emitter resistor so by not bypassing it as much I apply more negative feedback which reduces the overall gain at that particular stage. So in terms of a, uh, an inverting op amp, uh, using the, the 741, again because it's just nice and easy and readily available. Uh, in terms of the, the inverting input, so again the non-inverting input, got that going to a 1k ohm trim pot uh, with 13.8, again I'm just, 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 just schematic, um, which is then setting essentially our delay point. So how much that input needs to actually get to until such time as the AGC kicks in, which we'll see in the graph. Uh, the overall um, expression for the, the, the voltage gain for an inverting op-amp configuration is minus RF over RN. And what I've elected to do actually, and you'll see it um, if, if I zoom up on the actual little breadboard there, is I've got these just two variable resistors which means I can just sort of set them on the fly to, to adjust the how aggressive that um, amplification factor is and how aggressive therefore the AGC is, which is a nice easy way of doing it. Uh, in terms of an S meter on the output, just uh, plonking that through a uh, 10k ohm trim pot, uh, or just a yeah, trim pot there, just to um, set the range for that S meter, and then in terms of it's zero point, uh, 100k ohm then up to VCC. Um, and that's just a, a, a simple little meter. So uh, nothing, nothing to it. Just um, no, no flash hairy. If, if you look, you know, if you start to research um, AGC circuits, you, they get pretty complex, and there's a lot going on to it. So I'll, I've kept this simple on purpose. Um, it means that the performance is not brilliant in terms of you know a, a commercial machine, but hey, um, it um, it functions well. So what have I done so 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 for testing? Uh, what I have down here is, and I'm, maybe I can just zoom up on a little bit, is a um, simple little switch, double pole, double throw switch here. In the upper position, uh, that varying AGC voltage is being applied to that 1k ohm resistor and then to the, uh, the diode. In the other position, that's disconnected and then these two black wires come into play uh, and that is um, shorting directly to earth that junction, so that emitter resistor is now shorted directly back to earth, in other words the original configuration we've got flat out gain and no AGC. And the reason I had a switch there is that I could allow me to take various measurements and then plot them, which we'll look at. Now in terms of the breadboard over there, nothing too special to say, hopefully that's not too moving too much, it's a bit hard unfortunately where I am. There goes the, uh, just hiding over the back there are the two um, feedback resistors, so RG is our input resistor um, going to the uh, inverting input and that's our feedback resistor, uh, just notionally uh, 50k and um, 1k, just playing around with those. Um, the signal trim pot here is setting the range of just that simple little meter and then the the, uh, the 100k over here is is the that trim pot providing a, uh, a DC to the uh, non-inverting input um, to set the, the delay. And that's about it. Disregard that. That's just for um, disconnecting that voltage. 
Rightio. So what I did then for um, testing purposes, and I need to get back on air tonight um, and have a look at some live signals, I set things up to have... Right, what's the best way to explain this? I've got the SIGGEN here setting up to vary an input voltage between uh, 0 and 2 volts peak to peak. Uh, I'm putting that through uh, quite a amount, amount of, a bit of attenuation over here so I don't overdrive the actual receiver itself. And I've set the overall volume control to to a uh, the mid-range position so that with uh, no AGC applied, in other words the radio from a gain point of view is going flat out, with 2 volts peak to peak I don't overdrive the, um, the amp. I've got a nice uh, audio amp that is, I've got a nice um, a nice level there. And then I'm just going through and I uh, plotted at 100 millivolts at a time. I just went up and went up and up and up and basically looked at what the output was measuring, what the AGC volt was measuring, and then if I take the AGC out of circuit, what the voltage on the output was with no AGC. Um, and hopefully it is clear as mud. And what I then did it just threw it into Google, um, was it Google Sheets I think it's called, and plotted it. So down the left hand side here is those 1 through to 200 notional volts um, on the input to that big attenuator just to get a, a useful range of RF going into the radio. Output with the AGC on, so that's, with, that's the, um, on the scope that I was reading. The voltage with the AGC, so the output voltage, uh, ranges from 11.7 down to 1.9. Um, uh, the 741 op amp uh, does not go rail to rail, so um, that may be something to look at from an enhancement point of view, which I may look at tomorrow, is changing that 741 out for uh, maybe a 358 or, or, or something else. Um, I think it's a 350, yeah, whatever it is. No, it's not that one actually. Uh, yeah, anyway. So if I say uh, another type of op amp which allows a greater range, in other words going more up to the VCC rail and more down to zero. But anyway, for this particular configuration it's 11.7 down to 1.9. Then that final column there was with the AGC turned off, what were the values being read out on the scope? And what we see here on the right hand side, the red um, the red line there is the AGC voltage, in fact it's probably more logical to say the yellow line there is the output with no AGC applied. Um, an ideal AGC would, would rise up to a certain point and then just, just rock solid straight across. Um, I was not trying to design one of those, I was more looking at uh, what's commonly called a simple AGC circuit. So here I've got that bit of a delay, so after a small amount of increasing on our input level here, there's a point where the AGC kicks in and the output voltage or the AGC voltage starts to decrease. Uh, and as a consequence, that's the effect it has on the output of the radio. So you can see there the, the slope is, is significantly different between no AGC and with AGC. So that's basically where I've got to. And I think what I'll probably do tonight is have a bit of a play around um, see if I can, hopefully 80 meters is, is, is reasonably active and then I'll just have a bit of a play around to see what those settings look like in terms of RF and RG uh, for real on-ear signals but um, yeah, so that's about all really so just a, like I say, just a quick update on, on playing around with this and I don't think there's too much else to say really oh just that little meter over there, I mentioned that let me just um, scoot on around. Sorry. As you can see, this is a professional setup here. As we uh, vary that that voltage, we can see that the uh, the meter is varying there. So with no input, it should be down roughly by zero, which is set by that um, that zero. Um, the trim pot sets it to zero. And then as we turn on our AGC, then we start to get signal rising up. Um, we go up. So, yeah, nothing too much on that one. Right, yeah, well, I think I've rambled on way long enough, so I will probably look to, um, like I say, get on tonight and 
I'll tack on to the end of this little video here um, some on-air uh, reception just to see how it sits playing up. But uh, other than that, it's been quite an interesting day. So, 73, and like I say, uh, if all goes well, I'll tack on something after this. Okay, so just uh, just turned it on. Not going to uh, touch the volume control there. Got a couple of signals coming up here just on the local SDR receiver. We're currently listening to this one. Okay, so AGC off. AGC back on again. So that's um certainly um seems to work quite well for for I will touch the volume now. Seems to work quite well for a simple AGC, like I say, um nothing flash on that. We can see the voltage here um fickling around. The time constant was on the initial how's it coming through alright? No, not too bad. Let me just zoom up a little bit there. That's that um, that tower pot that sits uh, next to that one microfarad capacitor um, just after the detector. So you might be able to see if I just bring the camera up a little bit. You got the meter in the background. So that's a low time constant, and a much longer one up here. You sort of see the meter's not dancing so much. Let's go back down again. That's down the fast end. My understanding is it's trying to keep that AGC at a level between uh, words. I'd say that's probably a bit too fast there, so let me just go back up again. I think between the words it's not too bad. The longer gaps obviously it drops down a bit. Bit of signal fading there. Let me just go down a bit in frequency. What have we got around here? That's 60. So just 5 kcs apart, but haven't touched the volume which is nice. Let me just go with the volume with the AGC off. I'll put it back on again. That signal there is, is this one here. So in terms of the signal strength, it's a little bit down on these two. So 
let me just go back up to this one here, 3760, that's that one, I haven't touched the volume, and just jump up another 65, oops, 7 actually. I'll look back down here again. Seven one two. ADC off. So not not much huge difference here on that one, but soon if I go back up to here. ADC back on again. Certainly, from you know my rudimentary ear here, knocks that signal level from an output level close to this one. Anyway, let me turn that down because we don't listen to um, someone else's QSO too much. Okay, Luke, so I think that's pretty all I want to cover today. Um, again, not a tutorial, just just playing around and experimenting. Um, I think tomorrow I, I might I think. Um, solder that up onto a proper board and I'll just mount it over here and we'll continue playing around with that, tidy up this wiring here, get rid of the switch, that's not required and then sort of quietly think about what to do next and, and quietly think about uh, boxing this up uh, as you can see with, the, with an analog meter there was some thought about actually um, using the analog to digital converter on the Arduino to digitize that, potentially I could even look to digitize that voltage there um, or at least scale it between 0 and 5 volts and then have this the ADC look at that and then have actually a digital readout so I may look into that, we'll see um, but uh, I think that's all I'm going to cover there so 73 all and uh, take care and we'll catch you next time, cheers all